This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at a project that our club has taken on to allow some of our members in far-flung areas of the Lake Cumberland area to get into our main repeater site. We do this by installing receive equipment at some of these locations and then utilizing 220 frequencies to pipe it in to the main 88 repeater. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Alrighty, so what I wanted to do to kind of give you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish is to put up a map here so that you can see our main repeater site, the 88, right there in the center of that red square. We are trying to allow some of our members that are further away from that repeater to get into it more easily, especially if they're on an HT or if they're obstructed. They can hit a local transmitter, a local receiver and transmitter in their area, and then it will then essentially repeat them back to our main repeater site. It's kind of like a crossband repeater, but on steroids. And so at each of these locations, north, south, east, and west, we actually have equipment that will take in a different frequency for those on their HTs and so forth, send that to our main repeater site on the 220 frequencies that are set aside for this, and then that is piped into our main repeater, and then that will go out on the 88 frequency that we have. And so this gives our repeater even better reach. So one of the first things that we needed to do is take the equipment that AC4DM had put together. Now he's put in a lot of time on that shelf or that cabinet that he just took out. There are at least five receivers, just the receivers for the 220 frequencies that are going to be piped in from those far flung locations. And you can see there's the spaghetti monster on the backside. In addition, we have the terminating patch panel just below the black voter panel. And that terminating panel is going to allow us to connect all of the equipment together. The voter, the black cabinet, is going to allow one of the channels to be active at any given moment so that we don't get heterodyne and uh, uh, have two people try to talk over them. Loaded up the equipment in the old F-150 and headed up to the 88 site. And then it was just a matter of getting this equipment installed in our main rack at this location. AC4DM begins to take out the screws of the top panel on the ARCOM controller, which will ultimately will pipe all of the remote sites into port number two on the ARCOM. There, we've got the lid off, and now you can see inside this our ARCOM cabinet is just the one main PCB board. The port number two is in the jumper that we need is right there in the center, so he's taking his forceps there and he's going to move that jumper over to the rightmost posts and this is supposed to allow for what's called an active high now we're using port one and three already and the equipment that we use there is expecting an active low this equipment coming out of the voter is actually going to be an active high and so the arcom is really nice it's easily configurable to allow for either so we put the uh, screws back into the top panel once we have the ARCOM set up. AC4DM begins to ensure that some of the cables on the back side are tightened down. These were cables that were already there. There's the actual look of the voter. It doesn't have power on it yet, but this is going to allow our remote sites to come in. The voter ensures that only one of those frequencies, those 220 frequencies coming from the four or five sites, can communicate at a time terminating panel just below that and Donna is just amazingly good with these termination panels it allows you to connect equipment of various products together and we're showing the bottom panel as well that has all the receive equipment in them and then we have to tackle what is really the spaghetti monster on the back we've got to connect the voter system to the terminating panel we've got J2 through I believe J6 these cables to connect for uh, COS and some of the other goodies that are coming out. So here we're looking at uh, what we got there, J4 COS, and that is also labeled on the back of the termination panel. 
Of course, Dawn has ensured that we have the serial ports on the back of the termination panel, and then on the inside of that panel are actual bridges where you can ensure that you've connected everything with small leads of wire uh, for given signals coming in on that voter. Here we're going to, it looks like uh, another connector on the back side. I didn't quite read that, but this will, again, these are all cables coming out of the voter going into the termination panel. Now to the left of Don's hands, you'll see additional connections, and that's where the individual sites will come into the termination panel and then up to the voter. Our last connector on the right-hand side here on the termination panel, and then we're just about done with that side of the termination panel. Alrighty, now we're gonna to begin to start hooking up the actual remote receive sites. These are actual uh, ham radios at these various locations. They input a signal on one of our frequencies that we have set aside for these locations, and then they communicate back to the 88 site on 220 frequencies. So we put in the downtown, downtown or connected the downtown cable, which is on the local hospital at the top of the hospital. That's the Mount Victory that he just put in, the MV, which I run some antenna tests out that way from time to time. We've got a remote site out there on a tower. Another remote site. There goes our third remote site. That one is for Russell Springs. And here's our fourth active one. This is Wayne County. That's actually Monticello. And many of you have probably watched our videos on the abandoned repeater site, now known as the occupied repeater site, but that's down in Wayne County. Next, we need to start hooking up some 12 volt power to the voter, the termination panel, or, or actually the voter and the receive sites get power. And so we're just plugging in those Anderson power poles and then we'll check the voltage here in just a few minutes to make sure everything's good to go. Now, one of the last steps is we've got a longish cable coming from the voter system that's actually gonna go into the ARCOM. Again, the voter receives one of those remote sites coming to the top black cabinet. And if two signals come in at roughly the same time, it will vote or pick one, whoever got there first, uh, to allow that signal to come through. The other one will be blocked. And again, that's to prevent people from talking over each other from multiple remote sites. This cable, we're just wrapping up and anchoring on that bar across. And then Don's gonna plug it into port number two on the ARCOM repeater. Port number one is actually connected to the actual fusion repeater and it's monitoring port two and three. So anything that comes in on port two and three gets uh, essentially repeated on port number one. Don gets out his trusty uh, Yesu, uh, what do we got there? The 70, I believe it is. And he's uh, testing some of the frequencies to make sure that the receive units, now that they have power, are receiving the correct signals and are still working since we brought this from the garage. A little more tidying up. There were so many cables. And then next, we're just double checking that we have voltage where it needs to be. So Don's grounding his black lead, and then he's going to where he's expecting his 12 volts, and of course, uh, 13 and a half, more than adequate. And to begin to wrap things up, we wanted to test the equipment in situ. So now you can see voter number one is displayed there on the right-hand side. He switched his frequency to Mount Vernon. Now we've got voter number two, Russell Springs, voter number three, Wayne County, voter number four. So you can see that the voter is doing its job. It's receiving the signals from the termination panel coming up from the receivers in the bottom 2U cabinet. And one of the last things to do is to start connecting the RG259 cables to the back of the receive units. They're then going to receive signals coming from antennas we already have installed on the tower and waiting for somebody to communicate on those frequencies. In another video, we'll try to show you some of these remote receive sites coming in. But for now, it's just hooking up these cables and then doing a couple of more tests to make sure everything is working. To be honest and to be totally transparent, we still had something, some kind of a bug that the relay is clicking and, and the audio should be coming out on the repeater, but it wasn't. So we're gonna have to troubleshoot that. So again, tidying up some of these uh, cables for the various locations. And then one more time, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish, remote sites with their own equipment 
Our users, our members can use those frequencies which will automatically pipe them into the main 88 site and then vice versa. So this allows us to have an even more extended reach with clear communications. And that's it for now. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. We'll see you down the road and thanks for watching. 73.